In this video, we will look at configuring dynamic on-demand tunnels. By default, Cisco SD-WAN will build full mesh tunnels to all the devices in the SD-WAN fabric. This may require more resources and higher-end routers to match the tunnel scale. On-demand tunnels, on the other hand, will build IPsec tunnels only when there is intrastic traffic between the sites. When the traffic ceases, they will tear down the tunnels after the idle timeout. This helps to improve performance and have lower-end devices in the branches where direct connectivity between spokes is desired for communications like voice and video traffic. So, let's begin. Attached is the topology we will use for this demo. I have an SD-WAN edge at the data center and in three branches, all of them connected via dual transports. By default, they are running full mesh IPsec tunnels between them. We will now be configuring on-demand tunnels on these branch devices so that the tunnel between them comes up only when there is traffic. The branch devices will have static tunnels to the data center device and use it as a backup path. Let's first check our existing connectivity. So let's go to network. Let's select PR1. Let's go to real time. And check for BFT sessions. As you can see, this edge has built SD-WAN IPsec tunnels with all the devices in the network. Similarly, let's check for PR2. And branch 2 also has made full mesh tunnels with all the devices in the network. So let's go ahead and configure on demand tunnels. Let's go to templates. Let's go to feature template. Let's edit the VPN0 template attached to the data center device. Here, let's go to service. Let's add a new service. Choose traffic engineering and add. Let's update. Let's click next. Let's check our configuration. Let's config. This is done. Let's go back to templates. And this time, edit the system template assigned to the branch devices. Let's go to advanced. And turn on on demand tunnel. Let's have an aggressive timer of one minute for the idle timeout. Let's update. Let's configure. The template configurations are done. So let's go ahead and write our on demand policy. Let's add our policy. Let's create a T lock list. This will be the data center edge device system IP. Let's save. Let's check the VPN, and I've already defined the service VPN. Let's check on sites. And I've already defined the hub site and the branch sites. Let's click next. Here, let's add a custom policy. Let's call this on demand.
let's add our sequence add a route policy let's match on site so branches set the action as accept select the tlock and choose our hub tlock select the tlock action and set it as backup save Let's change the default action to accept. Let's save. Uh, we don't need any data policy. Let's call this on demand policy. Let's add our site list. These will be the branches in an outbound direction. Let's add. Let's preview the policy. And you can see we are matching the route and branches and setting the T lock as the hub as the backup. Let's save. Let's activate the policy. So the policy has been successfully pushed. So let's go back to networks and choose branch one. Let's go to real time. Check for VFT sessions. And now you can see that the SD WAN device has tunnels only to the hub device. Let's check the on demand status as well. And here you can see that the device has an on demand status of yes towards branch 2 and branch 3, but the status is inactive. Let's initiate some traffic from branch 1 LAN towards branch 2 LAN. And we can see that the communication is successful. Let's refresh this. And now you can see that the status has become active. Let's check on the BFT sessions as well. And now you can see that there are four sessions two towards the hub site and two towards branch two. Let's stop this ping traffic and initiate uh, traffic towards branch 3 LAN. And we see a successful communication. So let's go back and refresh. And now you can see that we have six SD WAN VFT sessions. The session towards branch 3 has also come up. Let's check on the on demand status as well. Now it is active for both the branch devices. Let's go back to the BFT sessions. Now, since the traffic towards branch 2 has stopped, the device should tear down the connection towards branch 2 after the idle timeout expires. So let's just refresh this page and check. And as you can see, that the tunnel between branch one and branch two has been teared down and only tunnels towards the hub site and the branch three site is active. Thus, you can see how on-demand tunnels enables direct optimized routing between branch sites.
based on traffic conditions and helps us avoid routing the traffic via a hub or a gateway site. That's it for this demo and thanks for watching.